Eternal God, we thank you and praise you. We magnify your name. Thank you, God, for all that you have done. For Lord God, we pray for that an anointing for that word to go forth. And Lord God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will confirm your word by signs, wonders, and working of miracles, oh God. For we know that you are a miracle working God and that you are still in control. And Lord God, in the mighty the name of Jesus, we just thank you for being so good in our lives. We pray now, oh God, for these, your people, for your word, that your word will go forth. Your people have a heart to hear your word, oh God, in the mighty the name of Jesus. And all the people said, amen. Psalm 68, Psalm 68, starting at verse 24. Psalm 68, starting at verse 24. And it reads, They have seen thy goings, O God, even the goings of my God, my King, in the sanctuary. The singers went before, the players on the instrument followed after. Among them were the damsel playing with timbrels. Bless ye God in the congregation, even the Lord from the mountain of Israel. There is little Benjamin with their ruler, and the prince of Judah, and their council, and the prince of Zebulun, and the princes of Naphtali. Thy God hath commanded thy strength. Strengthen, O God, that thou hast wrought for us. Because of thy temple at Jerusalem shall kings bring presents unto thee. Rebuke the company of spearmen, the multitude of the bull, with the cow of the people, till every one submit himself with pieces of silver. Scatter thou the people that delight in war. Princes shall come out of Egypt. Ethiopia shall soon stretch out her hands unto God. Sing unto God, ye kingdoms of earth. Sing praises unto the Lord, Selah. To him that rideth upon the heavens of heavens, which are of old, lo, he hath he doth send out the voices of the mighty, that a mighty voice. Ascribe ye strength unto God. His excellence is over Israel, and his strength is in the cloud. O God, thou art terrible out of thy holy places. Thy God of Israel is in the God of Israel is he that giveth strength and power unto his people. Blessed be God. Amen. Those who have an ear, let me hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say. O oh God, thou art terrible out of thy holy places. Our subject for this morning is Our God is an awesome God. Amen. Our God is an awesome God. How many of us know, how many of you know that God is an awesome God? We find here that the psalmist David uh, had written the psalms as as be part of the reception of the Ark of the Covenant. For we know that the Ark of the Covenant represented the presence of God because uh, inside the Ark was the the, the uh, commandments or the Ten Commandments that was given by Moses, and then on top of the uh, Ark of the Covenant, what they call the mercy seat, and on each end of the mercy seat was the angels, or seraphim angels. And there in between the angels was the presence of God that dwell there in uh, uh, on the ark. So then uh, David, he was excited about uh, the presence of God being among uh, Israel. He was excited about the presence of God uh, there in uh in Jerusalem, and I think that it is uh, it's safe to say that um, that we should not go or start the year without the presence of God in our lives. 
So no matter what comes, what comes our way, if we have God with us, if we have God in our lives, God can make all of the difference. How many of us know that God can make a difference? So they hear in this Psalms that uh, David, uh, he exalts the Lord, he exalts the Lord, he prays God throughout the Psalms and three times uh, throughout the Psalms, verse 7, verse 19, and verse 32, the David, the psalmist, uh, put the word Selah. And what Selah is, is a Hebrew word which means pause or which means to think about um, what was just said or what is about to be said. <clears throat> And I think, uh, I think I need to share notice with you that uh, one, two things here, as with the psalmist, uh, throughout the psalms, have, have praised God, that he gave a pause, that he also gave reasons why uh, he was praising God, and ultimately, towards the end of the psalm, that he gave the universal encouragement for everybody to give God some praise. And, and I think that it, it is safe to say here that um, uh, um, we have a lot of people praising of God, but yet they don't know why they praising God. And I think it is safe to say that uh, on all the trend, people have made praising God a trend. You see, whenever we give God praise, we ought to know why we are praising God. So then when we have praised God, then as the psalmist did, that um, uh, we can have this Selah moment uh, as we think about the goodness of the Lord. So for, as, as Selah means pause, it gives per person a time to think about what God has done in their lives. And I think I need to share notice with you this morning is that as we go on our daily activities, as we go through the course of this year, that every once in a while that we ought to pause and to sit down and think about the goodness of God in our lives. And I think I need to share a notice with you that when we think about God's goodness in our lives, no matter what our circumstances are, we can always see God's goodness in our lives. So then when we sit down and think about his goodness, you can't help but get happy for what he has done in our lives. You know, it's like the Apostle Paul said that when he... Um, was in front of uh, Herod Agrippa, he said that I can just think myself happy. <laughs> and I think, uh, I think uh, uh, we, we, every once in a while when we take that say law moment, that we ought to be able to think about, be able to think about the goodness of God and think ourselves happy. <laughs> so what is that saying is that we don't have to wait for anybody to be around us that in order to help us to praise God. Now, you can praise God no matter where you are you can praise God in your home you can praise God on your job, you can praise him in a laundry man, and wherever you think about how good God has been to you, then you ought to get the can help it and give God some praise. Is there anybody here who have a reason to give God praise? So did the psalmist so did the psalmist, he had exalted the Lord, he uh, had um, uh, lifted the Lord by saying there in verse, verse 1. He said, let God arise. In other words, let God uh, be God. Let God be who he is because he is the all-powerful God. He is the, the awesome God. He is the self-existing God. Let God arise. You know, you know. sometimes that's what we have to do that. Uh, let God arise. Give God place in our lives. Make God first in our lives because we, if we exalt the Lord, he will do just what he said he will would do. How many of us know that the Lord will do just what he said he would do? So he went about, he said, uh, uh, let God arise. And he, he was saying how that uh, when God is arise, when God is present, when God is first, he is saying that uh, just as with uh, Moses in the Mount Sinai, when he came in the smoke, when he came in the cloud, how there was thunder and lightning, and how in the presence of God that um, uh, the, uh, the the smoke was driven away, that wax melted as fire before the presence of God, that the wicked would perish in the presence of God. And he said that uh, when the presence of God is present, then the righteous uh, ought to, the righteous ought to be glad 
and to rejoice before the Lord. You see, when God's presence is among you, he is around you, the enemies cannot stand to be in front of you. So it's not about us, but it's about the presence of God, the glorious state of the Lord, the, the uh, majestic presence of God, his holiness, his righteousness, and his glory that is brighter than the noonday sun, his presence uh, around us and in our lives to where when the enemy decides to rise up, then they shall stumble and fall. So then he said, he said, he said this uh, uh, in verse 4. He said that sing unto the Lord, sing praises unto his name. So these are all those who are, 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 are children of God that uh, they ought to exalt the name of the Lord that he writing as the psalmist in his poetic language saying that he is one that, uh, that rise upon the heavens by his name John or by his name Yahweh or by his name Jehovah that, uh, that we ought to exalt before him now, and I think I need to share notice with you that uh, we will exalt the Lord uh, uh, and uh, exalt his holy name now, should the, the psalmist said he that rides upon um, the, the clouds uh, by his holy name and I think I need to share notice with you that the name of God is holy. And then uh, there is, we find all of that in the name of Jesus. And I think I need to share notice with you that there is power in the name of Jesus. And there is no other name higher than the name of Jesus. Because all eventually and all knees shall bow and all tongues shall confess that the name of Jesus that, that, that he is the son of the living God. They cheat the God that had went before his people. So he, uh, the, the, the psalmist, is building his case why they should praise the Lord. So he went before them when they were in the uh, the wilderness. He uh, went before them by cloud by day and fire by night. He showed himself in the character of a true God. Now let's run a prayer now. You know that God is the Lord, true and living God. But then there are the other gods that seek to take control of you. That God that you have to take care of. God that cannot do anything for you. But when you have the one and true God, his character is love. His character is righteousness. His character is joy. His character uh, is attributes uh, is omniscient being all powerful his character is uh, omnipotent uh, uh, all powerful and omniscient has been all known he showed as a true God uh, and being a true God uh, that he took care of the children of Israel wherever they went uh, so what is that said to us is uh, that when we are children of God that God will show up in our circumstances no matter where we are. And he will show up in being a true God. That he will take care of his home. That he will build a fence all around you. That he will put a hedge of protection around you. That he will guide your hand, guide your feet. He will tell you which way to go. How many of us know that God is the one true and living God? That he can get to you. He can help you when nobody else can. Is there anybody here that know that God can help you when nobody else can help you? So that's what the psalm is saying. That the reason there is another reason that we should be able to give God praise. That we should rejoice at the majesticness of God. Because he's saying that God can be everything we ever needed him to be. He is a father for the fatherless. He is a mother for the motherless. He is a friend in the lonely hour. He is a bridge over troubled water. Is there anybody here know that God can be a friend in the lonely hour? And know that he can make ways for you out of no way. So the psalmist is building his case. 
He is excited and astonished about the presence of God in this place. So then uh, he said when the presence of God is around, you know things have to happen. Things have to move when God is present. So he was saying that when God was present, he said the earth shook. He said the heavens drop. Even at the place of Sinai, that the presence of God was among Israel. And I think I need to share notice with you that when the Lord is present, something has to happen. When God is present, demons have to flee. When God is present, your enemies will leave you alone. When God is present, that of the healed, the sick shall be healed. When God is present, the soul shall be saved. How many of us know that? That's all when God is present, things just don't remain the same. And when you meet the Lord for yourself, that you will never again be the same. Amen. So then, so then the psalmist goes through this particular psalm and starting there between verse 11 and verse 17. And that's all. There is God's provision and God's presence and God's protection. And you know God can provide everything that we need. No one he has said in Psalms 23 and 1 that the Lord is my shepherd that I shall not want. And then he will send with the presence of God that he will fight your battles. You know, he said there uh, in verse 17 uh, about how God have angels uh, and how God have chariots. Uh, and I think I need uh, to share notice with you all this morning uh, is that I believe uh, that God still have angels. Uh, that you have an angel uh, and I have an angel. Uh, and all uh, of God's children uh, have an angel. Uh, you see, uh, uh, when God dispatches angels, uh, they will uh, put protect you from seen and unseen dangers. Uh, but fight battles that you know of and that you don't know of. Uh, and how many of us know uh, that the Lord will protect you uh, in the midst of your troubles? Uh, it may not be the way you want it to be, uh, but look at you. Uh, you still breathing. Uh, you still have eyes to see. You still have legs to walk. You still have a mouth to talk with. And I think I need to share uh, that the psalmist uh, is making a pretty good case uh, of why all of the world uh, ought to praise the Lord. Uh, so then uh, he says uh, them uh, down uh, uh, there in uh, uh, verse 24. Uh, he see how the magnificent uh, presence of God is uh, among the world. Uh, how he fought their battles. Uh, how how he fed them, how he guided them, how he had to applause on the goodness of the Lord. And then how then he expressed that he led the captivities free. And I think I need to share notice with you that the same thing that the Apostle Paul and said in Ephesians uh, that Jesus came uh, to lead the captives free. Uh, and I think I need uh, to share notice with them. Uh, and that's why Jesus died on the cross uh, and rose early that third day morning uh, that you may be free, uh, that you may have the chains broken off here, yeah, that you may have uh, uh, sin broken off your life. Uh, you know there is so many things uh, that we try to do in and of ourselves uh, but we cannot do it by ourselves uh, it takes the power of the Lord Amen. so then uh, so then 
the psalmist is there the, the saying that the prayer of God is in the sanctuary. Now it's a sad thing when you can have all the apparatuses of worship. You can have a nice building. You can have nice pews to sit on. You can have a nice choir to sing. You can have a nice deacon board and usher board. But if you do not have Jesus, you do not have much at all. And no, so then he was saying that the presence of God is in the sanctuary. And that all those who are singing, the Levites and the singers that went before them, and there now they are making music, they are singing praises. And I think I need to share notice that if there's any place that we ought to praise the Lord, we ought to praise Him right in the Lord's house. So then, so then, he said, he induced this, the people of Israel, to bless the Lord from the foundation of all of the leaders, of all the bless the Lord. And I think I need, you know, to share notice, you know, you want to bless the Lord for every chance that you get. You ought to give God to praise no matter where you are. You ought to give God a praise for what he has done and for what he is going to do. So then the psalmist them and talk about uh, the presence of the Lord uh, but he not only uh, talk about God's presence uh, but he also says uh, uh, how the Lord was the strength of Israel uh, how God uh, not only gave strength uh, but he was their strength uh, and I think I need uh, to share notice with you uh, the Lord will be your strength uh, while you're going through trials uh, and tribulation uh, is there anybody here uh, to know that the Lord will uh, be your strength Strength, uh, when it seems like you did uh, all you know how to do uh, and it seems like uh, you cannot go any further uh, but then the Lord uh, will give you strength uh, to go on a little while longer uh, so the Lord uh, so the psalmist uh, uh, was here uh, in the Psalms uh, talking about the presence of the Lord uh, and said about singing uh, and glorifying God uh, and then uh, he uh, said uh, talk about uh, uh, how God uh, had moved uh, and fought many battles uh, and how he uh, uh, now moving uh, uh, into universal praise uh, that he invited Jews and Gentiles alike to give God the praise because there is only one a true God. There is only one a God on a powerful and mighty God. So the psalmist induced them to give God praise and to show that we serve an awesome God. That our God uh, is an awesome God uh, that the psalmist uh, he said praise God uh, for his presence uh, in the sanctuary uh, praise God uh, that he is your strength uh, praise God uh, that he put on your battles uh, and praise God uh, for giving you peace in the midst of a storm uh, praise God uh, for his saving grace he said to praise God for he is the one true and living God he said to give God a praise for his excellent power he said give God a praise for the name 
mother known and then he said say love he is saying now God is all of this now you need to take time and think about who God is in your life you know you know who God is in my life may not be the who he is in your life he may be your friend he may be your counselor he may be your mighty God he may be your deliverer but I think I need to share notice that whatever God is that you ought to give him the praise you praise him for being overcomer you praise him for being a rock in a weary land that you praise him for his spirit praise him for his strength praise him for his protection praise him for his grace you ought to give God a praise for all that he has done for you you ought to give praise. If you've been your rock, you ought to give him the praise. You ought to bless his holy name. If you've been a bridge or over troubled waters, you ought to say love and take a pause and think about the goodness of God. Is there anybody here who know about God's goodness? Isn't he an awesome God? Isn't he a good God? Isn't he a righteous God? Isn't he a way maker? And if he is of all those things, you ought to think about what he is to you. And you ought to give him the praise. Is there anybody here who have anything to praise God about? Isn't he all right? Isn't he all right? Isn't he all right? For he is Jehovah's Lord. He is Jehovah's Nisi. He is our healer. Jehovah Rapha. He's our everything. Hey, if you can't recognize those names, you can find all those names. In this name, you ought to be able to recognize. And that name is Jesus, the Son of God. Jesus, the rock in the weary land. Jesus, the leader of the valley. Jesus, the outsider. Jesus, the mighty God. Isn't he all right? If you know he's all right, let me hear you say yes. Yes. Oh, oh. That God is. Yes. That our God yeah. Yeah. is an awesome God. Yes. Yes. We just have to learn to trust in Him. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Sometimes we think our ways, our ideals are plan are better than God's plan. Okay. But can't nobody do you like Jesus? Amen. And can't nobody. Do you like the Lord? Amen. We're going to extend the invitation. If you need a church home and you like Green Faith Ministries to be your church home, to be the, be the time to come. 